late September, uh, we had some vandalism on the property. You could see here some uh, kids or whatever came here and they tried to break this window. There's a bunch of punch marks here, here, here. This glass is all cracked and maybe it's not showing up on the camera. But uh, today we're gonna be replacing this glass in a 2015 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's a shame. They didn't take anything and just uh, wanted to cause some problems. So let me show you the parts and then we'll tear into it. So down here we have the main part. This is the window glass non-tinted i'm keeping it in the cardboard just to protect it because it's brand new it took forever to get this i mean it's i ordered this on september 30th and here it is december something and uh i think i just got it a few i think i got it the day before thanksgiving actually now that i think about it so it took a long time to get the parts you can see there's the part number It is a 68068670 AD. So technically that's all you should really need to do this job. Um, but just because of the age of the vehicle and we're going to be in there anyway, I'm going to replace the inner and outer belt moldings. And those are the, the pieces of, uh, of trim on the inside and outside respectively. That uh, Let's see if we can get this in the camera. This is the piece that you see on the inside that scrapes uh, you know, all the debris off the glass and whatnot. And there's a corresponding piece on the outside here. These parts are not cheap, so if you're on a budget, you can forego this step as long as you're careful removing, removing the belt moldings, you don't damage them. But this is what the outer piece looks like. It's not actually blue, there's just a you know, piece, piece of plastic covering it. But these have to come out to remove the window glass. And that one is part number 5539-9. Nine zero AF. Hopefully you can see it right there, maybe. There we go. All right, so let's tear into it. The first step is to get the door panel off. Anytime I need to do work on the inside of a vehicle or on plastic parts in general, this is kind of my, my go-to tool. It's an OTC 6642. It's a trim, trim stick kit. So it comes with a lot of different pieces of reinforced plastic that are designed to let you pry but not damage plastic parts. So we're gonna set this night near the vehicle. I think we're also gonna need a pick to remove some of the, the screw cover plates. So I'm just gonna forge around here and see if I can, maybe this, maybe this hook will do. Um, I think we're also gonna need a 10 millimeter socket and a seven millimeter socket. So I'm gonna grab those as well. Okay, I got all the tools that I think I'll need. I got my 10 millimeter socket, an extension, seven millimeter socket, quarter inch ratchet. Here's a belt molding puller. I bought this years ago. I've only used it once on another vehicle, um, but that's useful for getting those belt moldings off. So I think we're ready to go out there and tear into it now. Step one is to remove all my wife's junk from the door panel. I think that's most of it. Now we have to take a pick or a small flat blade screwdriver and pull up this little panel here. Let me get a different pick because I think this one's the wrong, wrong shape. Okay, let's try the flat blade screwdriver. That was pretty easy. Well, that's, that's the seven millimeter down there. Let's undo that one. Little trap door. Probably use a shorter extension on this because that's too long. Oop, don't need to unlock the door. Okay, so that's one. And the second fastener is behind here. So let's grab our pick. I think we have to, let's see, can you guys see? Get this in here and bank that out like that. And that's where we have our 10 millimeter. I don't think the Phillips screw has to come out. Oops, I dropped that on the ground. Let me grab it. Okay, let's take out our 10 millimeter. That one's on there quite a bit tighter. Move you guys back. Tough space to work and film at the same time. I think that Phillips screw just holds the door handle in, so that's why I don't think it needs to come out. 
But this 10 millimeter is what holds the door on, or this part of the door. Okay, so that's loose now. Get a magnet and retrieve that maybe. Or is it just gonna come out? There we go, okay. It should be all the fasteners that are holding the door in place. So now we'll start from the bottom and just uh, kind of pull it out with those trim sticks. Okay, so I'm gonna bring a variety of trim stick sticks with, him, with me and I'm just gonna see what works the best. Because you have to get under the door panel. Oh, there's a recess over here for it. Jeez, that's on there. Probably would help if I didn't park on an incline, right? Wow, that door panel is on there. These fasteners are good. Should just be a couple of plastic clips. Be nice if I knew where they were though. That's one. Two. Man, they are on there. Jeez, what are these things? Bionic clips? Let's see, do I have any stronger trim clips? Maybe one of these. Nope. There we go. That was loud. somewhere cooking a little fire now so this one seems to be the one that's working the best hopefully I'm not breaking anything Whew. let's work on this inner side a little bit well I'm just gonna keep on working my way around the door you guys get the idea I think I got all the trim clips out now I might be able to just lift the door up and out let's see Maybe. What's holding it? Let's see. I don't see anything holding it. All our fasteners are out. Unless there's a trim clip up here. Is there one? I don't want to pry. See back there? Oh yeah, there are. There are some up here too. Let me lower the window. That might make things a little bit easier. Okay, windows down. Let's see if we can pop out those pieces now. Oh. There we go. That did it. The door panel is loose. Uh, so we have some wiring to disconnect. Let's shut the car back off. Okay. So we have, you guys can see this, we have our door cable assembly here. So maybe we should take that Phillips screw out. Looks like we have a speaker harness all the way in the back here. Undo that. We have a harness for uh, this trim piece here. I probably should have taken that out, right? That might have been a little bit easier because we're going to need that. There we go. Just pops out with a trim stick like so. Hopefully you guys can see this. Yeah, I think you can. So let's disconnect the harness here temporarily. 
Okay, so now this piece is free. It's your door controls or your window controls. So now the only thing holding it is the door handle. Maybe we could just take that cable off. Oh boy, I don't know. Let's take the handle assembly off. That might be easier. And I don't have a Phillips head screwdriver. That was stupid of me. Is there another way we can do this? Appears not. All right, let me go to Phillips head screwdriver. Now, because I had to walk away to get the screwdriver, I just undid this cable at this little yellow clip, let the, the door panel kind of just rest on the ground against the door. So now I'm gonna use this Phillips and take that Phillips screw behind the handle off. And hopefully that'll allow the handle assembly to go flopping through the breeze here. Yep, looks like that's gonna let it come out. Then our door panel assembly will be completely free. Okay, there we go. So let me go set this panel aside, keep it safe. Okay, so now we have to take the speaker off and also this panel here, which is an access cover. Looks like the speaker is held on by Torx screw, so I'll have to get a Torx, fat, Torx uh, screwdriver for that. Then we'll need to get this inner belt molding off up here. This is the inner belt molding. The outer belt molding is on the other side. And the screws that hold the speaker on are four T20 Torx, just regular ones, not tamper resistant or anything. That's one. Now, those of you guys that have a Grand Cherokee of this generation, this is, a, like I said, a 2015. I'm curious what your experience has been. Have you guys looked at the, the newer one, that one that's uh, got three rows of seats, that Grand Cherokee L? My neighbor just bought one. It looks amazing. If there's any interest, uh, maybe I will let me go take a look at it and film it for you guys. So now our speaker should come out. Should be in the operative word. Do I need to use a trim stick on this? Maybe it's, yeah, probably just a... Just a little stuck on there. There we go. Okay, don't drop the speaker though. I'm gonna disconnect the wiring harness. Set the speaker aside somewhere safe. And now we just pop open this access cover, I think. It looks like it's hinged right here. How does it pop open? Maybe another trim stick. Oh, there we go, okay, pretty easy. All right, so now I think we access our window fasteners through these two access ports here. So there's gonna be one here and one on this side. So let's reconnect the window control and raise the window. Because we're not gonna be able to access those fasteners with the window down. So let's power up the vehicle and bring the window up. Oh, maybe down a little bit more. Where are they? Gotta see where they are. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to line up what I think are the, 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 the clips that hold the window in place through those access holes. I'm just moving the window up and down until I see things line up. Once I do, I'll show you guys what you're looking for. Okay, I'm going freehand here, so apologize for the shakiness. I think what you have to do is stick a screwdriver or something in there. I think it's just a plastic clip that you push out of the way here and another one here on the, on the, the inner side where the speaker was. So let's give that a shot. Actually, before we do, let's get that inner belt molding out. I think all you need to do is just take a trim stick and just pop it up, right? There. A little bit on. Maybe a bigger trim stick. Let's try this one. We've had pretty good luck with this one. Now, again, I'm going to be replacing this, but I don't think you have to. It looks reusable if it's in good shape. And in reality, I probably could have reused this one because it looks like it's in good shape. So there's your inner belt molding. And let's lower the window and get the outer belt molding off. I guess that's it. 
Now I haven't done this in years, so this should be amusing. So I'm gonna use my belt molding puller tool. And this one's in pretty good shape too. I mean, the main reason why I bought this is just because mostly lack of confidence on my part in getting this thing out in one piece, because it does have to come out. So what does it hook on to? Let me look at the new one and see what this is supposed to hook on to. We'll look at a cross section of that. So I think we have to hook on this little lip right here on the belt molding. Kind of hard to see, but this is the, the bottom of the belt molding. There's a little lip right there we probably got to grab. Here goes nothing. Not really feeling anything to grab. And this is exactly why I bought another one, just in case I messed this one up. And it's not a cheap part, unfortunately. Not really anything to grab onto there. I wonder if I could pop it up with my the trim stick. Probably not, but let's give it a try. Find the right combination of trim sticks, right? No. Just gotta figure this out. It's on there good. Sorry guys, I realize this is probably kind of boring for you, but it's part of the process and I, I know you guys like seeing the process, so. I did a repair video on a Whirlpool washing machine replacing the spindle bearings. It's, I think it's one of my most popular videos. And uh, a lot of you guys commented you liked how real everything was and it wasn't staged, it wasn't fake. So you're seeing what I'm doing, my thought process as I do it. You're not missing anything. I don't see anything to catch on to here. How bizarre. It's a song, right? Let me look at the, uh, the new one again. I'm gonna try a slightly different approach that I hope I don't regret later on. So under here, it looks like there is a lip to maybe grab onto. So maybe, again, it's been a really long time since I pulled the belt molding, but maybe you're supposed to do this from the outside. So I'm gonna put some blue tape just to protect the paint. Maybe a couple layers of it. Just regular old painter's tape. A couple layers just to be on the safe side. I actually, I think the first and only time I used this belt molding tool was on a on my old 2009 Corolla, the belt molding just disintegrated after a couple of years. By the way, say, I don't know if toys are what they used to be. All right, let's give it a try. Got our tool. Can you guys still see okay? Yeah, hopefully you can. Let's start over here. It may be a, a bust, I don't know, we'll see. really even get this tool in there. Maybe it won't work on this car, I don't know. I thought belt molding pullers were kind of universal. Maybe I need to open this up a little bit. I opened up the end of that tool a little bit with this flat bladed screwdriver. Let's see if that helps. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. It's on there good though. I don't think I'm messing up the paint. Jeez. Oh, I think we are creating a gap though. Let me work at this a little bit. I'll let you know if I'm successful doing that. This seems to be working. It's coming out slowly. 
Um, if you are not replacing your outer belt molding, it'd probably be also wise to put some blue tape on this nice dull chrome finish here so you don't mar that with the tool. Stupid alert. Look what I just noticed. There's a screw holding it in. T20 Torx. Don't I feel stupid? Oh man. Don't listen to me guys. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's try that again. <laughs> Watch, it'll pop right off now. Certainly a lot looser. Maybe we start on this side and work our way down the door. Maybe you guys will get an action shot now. Man, I feel like an idiot. How did I not see that? Are there any other fasteners that I'm not seeing? You guys are probably screaming at me. Joe, you're an idiot. How do you not see that fastener? Like I said, guys, I don't know what I'm doing. I just get lucky once in a while. All right, I guess we'll just keep working it. Maybe I'll start from this end and work my way that way. All right, guys, I think she's finally coming. I'm using, using a trim stick to pry from this side. I'm using the belt molding puller from the other side. I feel like it's starting to come off now. Maybe not. Maybe I lied. I mean, it's off here. Can we just kind of walk it out? Maybe. That is a tight fit, however they design that, I'm telling you. But I guess it's not, can't go anywhere, right? getting somewhere slowly here one of you pros could probably have this thing off in 30 seconds right I think we might have gotten it guys yay victory jeez yeah I messed it up kind of there's a bit of a Bit of a bow in it right here from when I was pulling on this side when that fastener was still in there. Man, that was dumb. Well, hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes. Look for fasteners first. Took a damp sponge and just cleaned off this area. I mean, how often is it gonna get cleaned, if ever, right? I mean, how often do you take the belt molding off your vehicle? Um, all right, so now we got the inside and outside belt moldings off. So now we should be able to roll the window up and, and remove things. I don't know, I think I might be getting to see how this works. Did we break something here? What are these tabs here? Are those supposed to be bent up or down? I think they're supposed to be down. Hmm. Thankfully, they bend back down pretty easily with finger pressure. But yeah, you can, I'm pretty sure I distorted those when I removed the belt molding because they're not bent evenly on both sides. Might have to do that one. Oh, I guess we'll have to do it now, right? Get a pair of pliers for that one. They're a little stiff, but you can bend them by hand. I was looking at this a little bit more closely. I'm now wondering if we actually even had to remove the outer belt molding. Huh. Maybe we did that for nothing. We'll see. All right, so I think the next step is to pop those, uh, or I guess bring the window up so we can uh, pop those fasteners out and release the glass. And I guess the glass might come out the front I don't know I guess we'll see so let's get the window moved back up <clears throat> need to put now need to not walk into the B pillar or A pillar let's 
bring the window up. Got to line it up just right. I think that'll do it. Turn the radio off. Wait, is it, it going to do it? Yeah, all right, I think I got things lined up where they need to be. <clears throat> Turn the car back off. Unplug this again. So now I'm gonna stick a screwdriver in there and release that clip, hopefully. Let's release this one. was released then unreleased. There we go, the back one's out. Let's see if we can get the front one out. There we go. I think the glass is free. Can we get it out? Oh yeah, look at that. I don't think we had to take that front belt molding out. Or the outer belt molding. So you guys saw how I did that. I just rotated it and it came right out. Now you can get a better look at the damage. Because <clears throat> it was probably bad lighting before. Sorry, I'm carrying you and talking at the same time. So, this is what we were dealing with. So the glass is actually very strong. It's two piece and there's a lamination between them, which I'm guessing is why the glass wasn't compromised entirely. So, pretty cool. All right, let's get the new glass in. I realize you guys might have missed me seeing me take the glass out, but I'll show you how it came out so you, so you know. So I think it goes in nose first like this. This is the new one, obviously. No cracks on this one. No cracks on it yet. But nothing is ever as easy as it looks, right? There we go, I think that did it. All right, so now we got the glass almost in the channel here. So we just gotta snap it into those retaining clips. One, oh, I think we're in. Cool. That wasn't so tough, right? Let's go freehand. I'll show you what it looks like. So you can see it's locked into that tab in there. And same thing on this side, down there. So now our window's not moving. So now we should be able to just put everything back together. That's always the easy part, right? I actually ended up taking the window back out again to bend these tabs back to hold the outer belt molding and I forgot to do that. So I think since I went off book a little bit, and again, I didn't have to replace this molding, I'm gonna install the new one just to make sure we can get it in with the, because we have to take the window out again. I'd like to do that. I'd like to do that before we get everything all put back together. Let's see, how does this go in? Looks like it has to latch on to this little piece of the mirror here. Carefully. There we go, like that. It should just snap in place, like that. Cool. Now we'll put that torque screw that eluded us, or eluded me, Put that back in before I forget. 
That holds the rear of the belt molding back in. Okay. Cool. We'll take that pr protective cover off last. So now, got the glass in. That's in, that's hooked in, your glass is secure. Let's start bolting stuff back together, guys. Actually, let's maybe send the window, do we wanna send the window up just to make sure it closes okay? It's probably a good idea, right? Let's uh, turn the vehicle on. Probably gonna have to clear the codes after all this from all these modules being unplugged. Normally the computers don't like that. Let's bring it up a little bit. Bring it up slowly. Seems fine. Cool. All right. Let's put her back together. Oh, okay. Next step is to put our speaker back in. Let's get our wiring harness hooked back up. Can you guys see me? So hard to tell with these cameras. I think you can. Hopefully you can. So that wire goes in there. This goes back in like so. And we'll get our Torx screws that hold it in place and we'll snug those up. Again, I think this is a T20. Did I bring the T20 inside? No, good, I left it out here. So you really don't need too many uh, tools for this job. Especially if you don't have to replace that belt molding. Man, I feel really dumb for doing that. Even more dumb for missing that screw that holds it in place. Okay, we got one. I'm using a, a magnetic tray over here to, to hold all the fasteners in place so I don't lose anything. Not that there's a lot, but it helps. One less thing to worry about, right? So yeah, before I was talking about the new Grand Cherokee, the latest generation, which I think is 2021 or 2022 onwards, I can't remember. It's a sharp looking vehicle. If any of you guys have one or you're thinking of getting one, let me know what you think, especially if you tested both the V8 and the V6, because my neighbor says that he has, he has the V6. He says that uh, it's actually quite a, noticeably slower than the Jeep that he had previously, which was the same year as this one. It's a 2015 with the V6, so. Same, same basic engine with, a, I think, maybe a small power upgrade because I think it's a, the Generation 2 Pentastar, but the vehicle's a lot bigger, so he says it's noticeably slower. So if you guys have one, curious to hear what your thoughts are. Do you find it to be slower? It's a beautiful vehicle inside and out. But as they always say, there no, there's no replacement for displacement, right? All right, so am I missing anything? I got... We got that all situated. This is clipped back in place. That's bolted in. And I think now we just have to put the door, door panel back on. Took the opportunity to just wipe down the door panel. I used some of that Meguiar's uh, uh, vinyl and rubber conditioner. Um, I'll hit, hit that hand rest there with some leather, or arm rest with the leather cleaner later. So let's get the door back installed. Um, what do we have to do? We gotta do the door handle. And there's a screw that holds that in. We got that's seven and we got the 10. All right, so we don't have any spare fastener. That's a good sign. So let's do the door handle next. We got to make sure that we fish the, uh, this lock thing back up through the hole in the door panel too. So I'm just going to finagle this thing back in here. Around. Let's see. Let me undo this clip here. Give me a little more slack in the line. There we go. I think that does it. Now we just got to put that Phillips screw in. It really wasn't that bad of a job. I was expecting worse. I mean, especially if I'd have to fight with that belt molding. 
And you could do this, you know what you're doing, maybe an hour or two. I, mean, I don't know what I'm doing, rarely do. But I can FFIO, I'll let you guys Google that one. Otherwise I'll get demonetized. All right, so I'm just feeding all the wires through the respective holes. Let's get this lock lever, there we go. Um, did I take this trim piece off before or after the door panel? I can't remember now. Oh boy, let me check the footage. Yeah, you guys were right. This piece has to go on before the door panel. This is the inner belt molding. And again, I bought a new one. You don't have to, as long as yours is in good shape. It's just how I roll. Ooh, this thing's damaged a little bit. Will we be reusing this? I don't know. I think the old one might be better, better shape than the new one. You see here? Bit of a crease in it and a puncture wound. Brand new factory part. Unbelievable. All right, we'll reuse the old one. Thankfully, of the two belt moldings, that was not the expensive one. So I uh, got the old one, cleaned it up, put some of that rubber and leather conditioner on it. Same stuff I put on on um, the door panel. We're just going to reinstall this. Just kind of pushes in place. This one's a lot less painful to remove and install. There we go. Good as new, right? That's your semi-finished product. Now, let's put the door panel back on again for the 16th time. Now it's just a simple matter of lining everything back up, making sure you can still get your wiring harness and just snapping everything back together. Gotta make sure everything's lined up though. Don't force it. All right. Now we gotta reinstall that 10 millimeter bolt that holds things together up here. If I can find my 10 millimeter socket, there it is. Is it going in? Yeah, it is, okay. La 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 la. So what are you guys doing today? Anything fun? It's Saturday, I think. Is it Saturday? Where's my seven millimeter socket? There she is. And our seven millimeter goes down in that handle crevice in here. You know, I think I'm gonna get a, a shorter extension because this was interfering here before. Ah, I'm just gonna try driving it by hand, screwdriver. It's a seven millimeter bolt, it's not. There, that's going. At least the probability of damaging the trim is lower with a plastic handled screwdriver than with a metal handled ratchet. Okay, we gotta put our window control in, which is right here. Could have put this in first, doesn't really matter. That's in. Just pop it back in place, like so. Close that. I'll shove this back in there too. How does this go in? Okay, just looks like it snaps in place. There, I think we're done guys. Let's give another test. Window up. Cool. Window down. Cool. All right, I think now we need to clean it and peel that sticker off and then we're done. 
I don't think you guys need to see that part though. Anyway, so hopefully you found this video helpful. You saw what I messed up. I don't always do everything perfectly. So just again, you do not have to replace the inner or outer belt molding to do this job. I replaced the outer belt molding um, just because of the age of the vehicle and I was worried about damaging it when I took it apart and it turns out I did. But then again, I didn't have to, I didn't have to take it out so it was wasted money. So really all you need to do this job is the glass. So that was, I think the glass was maybe about $300 or so. Um, this piece was about 75, the outer belt molding, the inside piece, which was damaged from the factory, was about 15. I'm not even gonna waste my time trying to return it. Um, but yeah, so not many tools needed. You need a 10 millimeter socket, seven millimeter socket. You'll need various trim sticks. Turn the radio off. Uh, you'll need a T20 Torx. I mean, this, this is all the tools that I used are sitting right here. So not a whole lot. Flat blade screwdriver. So yeah, pretty easy job. Uh, if I had to do this again, I could probably do it in half an hour and 20 or half an hour to 45 minutes. It wasn't bad at all. Anyway, if you guys like this video, please subscribe. Um, hit that like button. Stay safe and thanks for watching.